I pretty much narrowed down we have a problem with the master cylinder. It does have a leak, but it's internal inside of the master cylinder where it's actually losing pressure. The next step now is to go ahead and take our two lines off the master cylinder, take the two bolts off, and then we can go ahead and pull it out of the way. When we disconnect the brake lines from the master cylinder, there's going to be some fluid that's going to escape from there to kind of help protect the, the painted surfaces of the car. I'm just going to put some shop rags down in here to catch the brake fluid. Something else I want to do too, I've got two uh, nuts where it's attached to the power brake booster. In order to gain access to that, I'm going to go ahead and take our power brake hose assembly off. Okay, we have the power brake hose out of our way. The next thing we want to do is, when we're taking the master cylinder off of the vehicle, just leave the cap on there because it is full of fluid. But I do want to unplug the level sensor. And if you look at our two plugs here, there's only really one way they can reconnect. We have the female connector on this end of the sensor. And we have the male end on this end of the sensor. So we go to reattach it. It's pretty much foolproof which way it goes back together. The next step, we want to leave the master cylinder attached to the power brake booster to help hold it still. We want to go ahead and take the brake lines off the master cylinder. Okay, this is where a line wrench really comes in handy. The way the wrench is made, the line could go in between the wrench there. If you've ever taken a fitting off and you've, the fitting's all been rounded off, chances are they just used an open-end wrench on it. This is an application where the line wrench really is helpful. that one. Okay, lastly we have two nuts where the master cylinder is attached to the power brake booster. We'll take both those nuts off and then the master cylinder come right out of there. Now the master cylinder will just pull right out. The power brake booster looks just fine. The next step now is to prepare our new master cylinder to be installed. As with any job, to do it right, you'll need the right tools. The nice thing is that jobs today don't require a large, expensive assortment. Basic hand tools are generally all you'll need. You'll need a shop manual for your specific vehicle, DOT 3 or DOT 4 brake fluid, as recommended by your vehicle manufacturer, brake line wrench, and a drop light. You may also need screwdrivers or pliers to remove some components. Be cautious when working under the hood. If the engine has been running, components will be extremely hot, so be careful what you touch. When lifting a vehicle, never work under it until it has been secured with wheel blocks and securely positioned on jack stands. A hydraulic jack alone is never enough. Be cautious when working with oils and chemicals. Many are damaging to the groundwater environment and toxic to people and animals. Never drain or pour chemicals into the ground or sewer systems. Local municipalities and counties offer resources for proper disposal. And always remember to wear your safety glasses. Get the entire DVD for this repair and all other procedures covered in the complete car care series at your local AutoZone store.